wonderful day to be in North Carolina. Wouldn't you agree? Can I get an amen to that? Amen. God bless you all for being here today. And what an honor and a privilege it is to stand here before you and all these wonderful folks who organized this event. What a blessing for all of us. You know, folks, in North Carolina, my job as Commissioner of Labor is to make sure that about four million workers every single day go home safe and healthy to their families, loved ones, and friends. It's a big responsibility. I pray every day for God's help in making that happen. And I hope that you will pray for me every day and our staff that we can make sure that our employees are safe and healthy at work. That would be very much appreciated. You know, families are hurting in North Carolina right now, aren't they? There's so much unemployment and underemployment. Families are scared. They don't know what the future holds for them. And when you think about them and when I meet them all across the state, your heart just breaks for what they're enduring. I wish that we could make it all different today, but we can't. It's going to take time. It's going to take all of us working together to make good things happen for everyone in our state. Everyone working together, no matter what your philosophy, everyone working together, and we all need to pray for that. But there's no better indication of how people are feeling those that are on the assembly lines, those that are working in our fields, when they get word that their job's not gonna be there anymore for them. The factory's closing, the project's finished, the crops are harvested. There's no more work for those folks. How do they feel deep inside? What's in their hearts and what's in their minds and how can we help them? You know, we have a very important person in North Carolina. She's a wonderful writer. Her name is Barbara Presnell and she's from Ashboro, and she teaches at UNC Charlotte and she wrote a wonderful book and I have it with me today it's called Peacework and it's about people who worked in the textile industry and you know what's happened to that in our state but it goes through people and talks about their dreams and their hopes and their aspirations and yes their fears when that textile mill closed where they were working Today I would like to share with you some of those feelings through one of her poems in this book, and it's called Sherry's Prayer. I hope you will enjoy it. Sherry's Prayer by Barbara Presnell. I am 46 years of age and no education. Evenings I sit at the kitchen table studying fractions with my oldest grandbaby. Ms. Wilkins at the college thinks I'll pass my GED first try. But then what, I ask her. I know I made the choice to start at the meal and end at the meal, but I guess you don't think what if when everything is going good. There was a time I thought I'd go to college, wanted to be a nurse, can you believe it? Ms. Wilkins said I could still do that, but I don't know if it's in me anymore. I won't ever forget the day the plant manager called us into the break room and told us that it was over. We were let go, just like we were cattle turned out to pasture. Thirty years I operated a machine. I growed up in that mill, my family is in that mill, and all I care about, even if I should have known better. Can't eat regrets, I tell Maxie. He gives me them big moon eyes of his. He slaps me on the fanny like he could make everything all right with a little loving. Can't eat loving neither, I tells Maxie. I never had trouble sleeping, but these days I lay awake half the night listening to Maxie snore, wondering what will become of us. I have learned to make one chicken last a week. And if you study and shop the sales, you'd be surprised what you can save at the grocery store. I put in for jobs whenever I hear of openings. My check comes like clockwork every Tuesday. I still got three months coming, more if I stay in school. And still, we're better than some. Maxie says we will make it to the other side. I pray every day one of us doesn't get sick and that we will lose our house we have worked so hard to have. God made the promise of the rainbow. 
And that is what I cling to right now, that God will not leave us with nothing. Amen. And that's what we cling to right now, folks, that God will not leave us with nothing. So if you would, join me in a moment of prayer. Dear God, we are all in this together, whatever storms are swirling around us as we go through our lives, especially now when things seem so difficult. I pray that you would give each one of us the strength, the wisdom, and the courage to make the right decisions, not only for ourselves, but for our families, our community, our state, and our great nation. And please, dear God, help that right decision be to keep God in our lives to make him foremost in everything that we do. Bless you, bless us, and bless you for having this call to prayer today. And bless our troops wherever they are, wherever they serve, keeping us safe and providing this wonderful freedom of religion that we enjoy in this great country. And I ask these blessings on us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.